The measurement sensitivity required in the search for neutrinos and dark matter prompts us to consider various sources of signal disruption. One key source arises from the materials used for detector construction. No matter how clean or precisely manufactured materials may be, there is always risk that certain particles may outgas directly from a material surface or from microscopic pores beneath. Radon is the atom of interest in this example, which exists commonly in nature and is prevalent underground. Radon's decay produces numerous alpha particles, which cause trouble in our detectors. We need to identify a radon emanation rate for all materials we want to use in our detectors to determine if they're suitable. This is where our radon emanation measurement process comes in. Here's a brief overview. The process begins with a scientist thoroughly cleaning a sample and placing it into an acrylic emanation chamber for a period of time. This allows the sample to reach an equilibrium state by outgassing any excess radon. Afterward, the extraction phase begins where radon will travel through an emanation board designed to isolate it. The scientist prepares the correct valve configuration to allow the radon to move from the emanation chamber to the primary trap. Next, the scientist immerses the primary trap in liquid nitrogen, which brings the trap to the exact temperature where radon will stick to it. Other gases will remain in the gas phase and be pumped out of the system. The scientist adjusts the valve configuration again to prompt the radon to move from the primary trap toward the secondary trap. The secondary trap follows the same cooling, pumping, and heating process as the primary trap and is important because it concentrates the sample into a smaller volume, which increases its transfer efficiency. The scientist then attaches a Lucas cell to the end of the radon board pipeline, which will catch the radon from the secondary trap once it's heated and given time to transfer into the Lucas cell. A pressure differential prompts the gas to enter the Lucas cell, the endpoint of the radon in the emanation board. Finally, after enough time to allow the radon to fill the Lucas cell, it is moved for analysis using PMTs where we will obtain our emanation rate result. With the emanation rate, we develop a clearer understanding of the background signals that could interfere with sensitive detector measurements. Even things like gloves used for detector work and maintenance are analyzed using this process. The results from these analyses help us make informed decisions about detector construction as well. Snow Lab offers this radon emanation process to the science community and industry partners free of charge. For more information, visit the website to learn more about this process and other services we provide. <laughs>